Namaste, Vanakam, and Namaskaram, and a very warm welcome to all. My name is Kaylee Mudli, Executive Member of the South African Hindu Mahasabha, and I have the pleasant task of introducing our celebratory guest who will demonstrate on how to prepare the sacred rot, which is offered as prasad at Hanuman Puja. Joining us today, we have a legend and well-known household name, especially within South African Indian communities, celebrity chef Mrs. Asha Maharaj. Mrs. Asha is popular for her gourmet take on Indian cuisine that includes several recipe books, food columns, and her popular show on radio and television. A media columnist recently said, Asha Maharaj creates dishes that honor her heritage bringing its complexity and flavor to our homes and to the homes of millions over the years who savor the richness of the South African Indian cooking. Joining her, we have up-and-coming culinary trendsetter and master chef contestant, Dr. Yudhir Harinarayan, or more famously known as Dr. Harry, on social media. Dr. Harry is probably Durban's most famous and promising upcoming chef at the moment. Chef by night and dentist by day, Dr. Harry is not just a culinary whiz, but also a professional dentist with an ability to tickle your taste buds. Namaste, thank you for joining me this morning. I am so pleased to be at where I am right now. I'm in the company of this wonderful <laughs> young doctor. He's a dentist, but no, he's not here to do any of his dental <laughs> work with me. We are actually going to spoil you with something sweet. This part of the year, everybody has it and he's promised to make the best road. So let's try out his skills. Dr. Hari, we in no hurry today. We're gonna to take it easy and produce the best road. As you know, Hanumanji's prasad has to be done with a lot of care, love, with the cleanliness of body, mind and spirit. Hi there everybody. I just wanna thank the South African Hindu Mahasabha for inviting me this morning to cook with the legendary Asha Maharaj Ji and today we're going to be making something very special and she's going to be teaching me and you how to make rot for the upcoming Hanuman Jayanti and uh, yeah, the, sh so the stage is yours, so yeah, let's get started. started. So. Alright, Chef, you have to measure the amount of flour, which is five cups. This is normal, what we refer to as cake flour. Mm -hmm. You'd like to put it into the large mixing bowl. Perfect. Okay. And to that, <coughs> add the ghee. This is semi-solid ghee. Okay. And if it was melted, like you can see parts of it there, mm -hmm. then we would have had to use less. Less, okay. Uh, but now you put this... Should I create a well in the middle or just... Yeah, no, no, you can just put it there yeah. like that. Okay. But try and get all of it out. For this, you'd use your hands quite a lot. Yeah. You don't need a... You, your hands are all scrubbed. Okay. <laughs> yeah. You are so used to scrubbing in your profession. <laughs> yeah. So it comes naturally. Scoop all of that out okay. so you don't lose anything. And rub it all to a nice sandy texture. Okay. okay before we add the sugar. Always, as you know, mm -hmm. when you are making... Um, even when you're making like scones, mm. you'd rub in the fat yes. before you would add the sugar. To so just rub it in, yep. To create a breadcrumb texture. Yes, right? a little finer than breadcrumb would be okay. And just rub it in. You'll notice there's no raising agent in this. Mm. It is a method of mixing which aerates the whole mixture. Okay. Okay, you just create that lightness that you require. Am I doing it correctly? Absolutely. <laughs> Get all of it out of your fingers and put it together. Nice to play with a flower. <laughs> yeah, lovely. Reminds you of your young days when yeah. you were imitating your mom making roti. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that's where your love for cooking started. 100%. Your 100%. love for the kitchen started. I think, yeah. So now I'm putting you to the real test. Yeah, this is the real test. Get all of the dried flour in. Yeah, and rub it in well. Okay, just continue to do that until you get it well mixed. I think now we can add the sugar, which will also, this is measured two cups two of cups. sugar. All right. So add all of that. Rub it in. It'll be much easier now yeah. to get all of it together. That's perfect. 
have to avoid all the lumps, you just yeah, get them all break them down. Them. Yes. Okay, now we have here freshly ground cardamom, mm -hmm. which is elaichi. It's, it's important to use a good variety. Here's the green one, <clears throat> which has got a lot of its oils present in the skin. So just a tip for our viewers that, you know, you don't have to uh, peel it before you grind it. Yeah. The volatile oils are present in the skin. Oh, okay, interesting. So just toast it. I do it in the microwave oven. Yeah. So you know that you know you're gonna watch it. It wouldn't burn. Yes, yes. And there's no need to put on the big oven. Yeah. Uh, when you need to do a few hundred grams. Yeah. So just toast it in the on a plate in the microwave oven until mm. it's nice and crisp, and, and your nose will tell you that it's ready. It's yeah. lovely and aromatic. Mm. And then just put it into the spice mill or the coffee grinder, yeah. and you get that sort of a texture. Yeah. Okay. I do it just because it's easier actually. It's much easier. <laughs> or, you know, in the days gone by, we used our pestle and mortar. Yeah, we'll use that, yeah. And, or the seal and lora. Yeah. Anything that works will work. Yeah. Okay. Hanmanji is not fussy. No, definitely. Okay. I'm going to put a good amount. Just say about a teaspoonful. You don't want to overpower it. Okay. Now, this is the whole one just to show people that when ground, you get that texture. Okay. Mm. Now to this, we're just going to add the milk and make a soft dough. Milk is plus minus one cup and you know you add it as you are mixing yeah. so you know how much you add. We have here almonds which are sliced, blanched and sliced. These are optional. Right. It's not absolutely essential. One of the important things in the prasad, but you're going to be serving it as another mixture for prasad with the raisins and the sugar candy yes. and the sliced coconut. So you don't have to put it in the rot. Yeah. You will, that mixture will feature somewhere in mm. your prayer. Okay, so I'll give the milk, I'll pour the, milk, pour in the milk in and you just mix it. Okay. Right. I think when we were, you can pardon, when we were doing a prayer, I realized that most of our prasad is made with basics, sugar, flour, Yes, oh. yes, yes. Sugar, flour. I mean, the panjiri is only flour. Yeah. And a little bit of ghee. Once the the, the flour is nicely toasted. Yeah. Dry toasted, then just a drop or two of ghee, and uh, the, the flavoring in that besides the sugar is black pepper. Oh, okay. Peppercorn. Yeah, it's got to be whole pepper that's pounded and added to that. Okay. Let me just add a little bit more. Just mix. You don't put all in like you're doing bread. When you're doing bread, as you know, yes. you put all the liquid in gotta at one time. Got to add this slowly. This you got to add slowly. Yeah. Pick up all the dry flour. That is coming so nicely. You must have your bowl nice and clean after you've got all the flour adhering into a mass of dough. Wait, let me put some more. Thank so you. it becomes too soft, you, you got me to blame. <laughs> okay, I'll hold the dish and you carry on. This is hard work, huh? <laughs> it's pleasant yeah, if you are dedicated to it. Exactly. As True. you would know in chef training yourself, that all that you did, uh, you put your heart and soul into it. I'm not a trained chef. And <laughs> <laughs> and I'm a home cook. You're a home cook. Yeah, a home cook, self-taught. Well, that's the most important thing. We yeah. all started at home 100%. before we ventured out to go into the public eye. And How's the dough how looking? does it feel like it can be molded? Yes, yeah. perfect. Remember, it's got sugar in it. Yes. And the sugar at some stage will be melting down yes. with the heat of the ghee. Yeah. And you don't want it to become too soft. You want the, the end result must be a nice biscuity um, mm, dough. Yeah. It must be like a biscuit finish. When you break the road, it must have a nice biscuit finish. Not hard and not like bread. Mm. Okay, so bring it all together. And you were saying something about the temperature of the milk. The milk, too cold. yeah. If you put chilled milk, you get a very hard root. Interesting, so, yeah. Yeah, I always use the long life milk. I know it's in the cupboard mm. and you don't, if you'd forgotten to heat the, the, the refrigerated milk, yeah. you've got the long life back, milk which is up. at room temperature okay, all the time. Okay. Yeah. Can I help you? Yeah. My hands are scrubbed too. Should I put the stove on? Please do that. Do you want it on a high or medium high? Well, heat it to moderate. So that you know the root doesn't burn. Remember, the root is a thick biscuit type of mm. preparation. It has to cook through. 
Right. And you don't want any rawness in it. And obviously there's no baking powder in here, so no over handling the dough isn't a problem. Yes. Really. Yeah. We brought it all together. Don't worry about the cracks in the dough. Mm. It's not necessary to knead it out until it's absolutely smooth because then you'll get a bread-like texture. Okay. Okay, now out of this, you'll get minimum of 20 good-sized roots. Okay. Okay, so now we're going to start dividing it. You can, you can take a fistful. All right. There's no need to uh, weigh <clears throat> it or you know, anything like <laughs> that. Not to be too, too particular. No, there you are. You can go ahead right. and... Do we just section it like this? Section Not shaping it like it yet? Uh, when you're shaping it, there is no need to use the rolling pin, okay. which is important to have it as a standby for many people who don't have huge hands like <laughs> myself. Um, but the idea is to not to have very thin edges, edges okay. because that's the edges that get hard. And crispy, yeah, too crispy. crispy. You don't want it, you want it nice like a pure Even thing. almost throughout the... Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Evenly rolled out, okay? Like so. And when the ghee is hot, see when you, people like to make rot of all sizes. Right. Many people like to make little ones so that they serve individual rot to people. Right. It's got to be served to the people. Yes. On the other hand, some people make larger ones and break it up into yeah. pieces. So whatever suits you, Right. you can do. What do you think of my shaping? Is it all right? I think it's perfect. Okay. okay. And practice will make perfect. Yeah, this is my. I've always helped making rot, but it's my first time making it from scratch. Okay. I, I'm Jenny. I'm Jenny in charge of the halwa puri. My halwa. Okay. I whip the halwa. Oh, wonderful! <laughs> the next time we do something like yeah. that, maybe Naratan will come in uh, with a kind courtesy yeah. of uh, Mahasabha. We will do some halwa and puri. Definitely, I look forward to that. Okay. That's a nice size. Okay. Okay. You'll feel it yourself <coughs> that it's even throughout. Yeah. Okay. It's not bumpy. Yeah. Because obviously those bumpy edges are going to lead to sort of darker spots and yeah, burnt areas. Spot and also uh, cook more on the thinner side than the thicker side. And you don't want that. You want it even. And besides, although God doesn't complain, but you want to give it the best looking, yeah. best tasting, the cleanest. The best preparation, as you all know. Yeah. Okay. And how long do these need to fry? Uh, until it floats to the surface. Whenever okay. you deep fry, right. and you have the heat to the recommended temperature, okay. which is in this case, because remember, ghee has got a very high uh, melting heating, point. Melting yeah. point. Yeah. You got to do it. You got to adjust it from moderate to low, yeah. because you put in one, the temperature goes down. One or two, <coughs> temperature goes down. And the size of perai tells you that you can take minimum three. You can take maximum five, Four, five. of the snack. Yeah. Okay. So should we use spotted spoons to? You have to, but not at the not moment. Yet. Turn down the heat. Okay. Turn down the heat so that it cooks through. Okay. Look at this technique, doubling it up. I've seen some people squeeze the top. Is that correct uh, or incorrect? You, you or? can, you can squeeze it. You can get a lot of the fat out of the... Out of it. Yeah. But then you're losing all the flakiness in your... You're losing a lot of the... You know, the taste is important too. Yeah. As you said, we are serving this to people, you know? Mm -hmm. <laughs> But I think, you know, this what I've you know, realized of us that, yes, we shouldn't be as critical of, you know, of, of the rot making or when you receive prasadi, you shouldn't be critical of no. how it is, you know? People have offered it with so much of love, with yeah. so much of care, so much of devotion. Yeah. Accept it and they will get blessed. The person who made it will get blessed. But if you're critical of it, you're a negative criticism, yeah. it's not good about anything. We've got the last two to put into the ghee, and we're done. And the normal other accompaniment that goes with the rot is suji. Okay. Uh, you know, when you uh, chirhawa that at Hanumanji, yeah. 
रोट सूजी पंजीरी कथा एंड ऑल द मिक्सचर ऑफ प्रसाद फ्रेश कोकोनट स्लाइस यू नो डाइस एंड आमंड डेट्स ऑल ऑफ दीज थिंग्स सो यू नो दोज आर द थिंग्स दैट गो विद इट and you find a lot of people just collecting the dates and the almonds and keeping it under the tree they don't eat it and that's a nourishing part of the entire preparation i'm sure lots of us have done that <laughs> not the only one don't judge <laughs> but you know if you all the other prasad is finished and you sit one day and do nothing you just eat that you know how much you enjoy it yes 100% <laughs> So you got married did you start making your own rot no we had to know something before we got married <laughs> you wouldn't have got the certificate of reference you know what i mean you know a kitchen is it's not only a space for a woman you know it shouldn't be and times have changed where now that both partners have a job uh it's not the lady's responsibility to be cooking the food at home she also has to go out and uh earn an income so it should be an equal space that we can all come together and i think it's so important especially with prasad and i think you mentioned earlier on that prasad used to be prepared by men you know it should be here yeah. used to be prepared by men and most of the prayers for hanuman baba is always you know sort of male centered should i say the janda is always put up by men, men. so yeah. why should we not also take the time and uh, make the prasad ourselves yeah that's true and you know i think it comes with a lot of education surprisingly i didn't expect them to puff up uh you know so much without any raising raising agent. agents yeah that's why i said don't let the be a mound in the center and i think it's a, and 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 the reason why you added the sugar after you added the ghee so is that the sugar doesn't dissolve in the ghee so it uh, still forms crystals and yes and and it also mixes better okay yeah. oh yeah true in prasad usually what they do leave a lot of water yes and then put the tester in it fry this one little bowl of mm. dough and put it in there Is there any significance to that? Uh well there are lots of uh, stories about that. One one that I remember is that you pray to the Agni mm-hmm. that you don't get burnt as a person <laughs> burnt <by> your food. <laughs> so we should I think you know for young people um like myself who are working busy lifestyle and you almost want to um be tempted to buy the rot. Mm-hmm. And but as we've spoken about uh making it is part of the process and it's a meditative process and you should it's all part of offering the prasad putting it in front is not just the offering offering it is doing all of this together that's true you know i think there's a whole lot of education that needs to be done mm. amongst our people among, among people who are the young people who are sitting at their own home who are not living with parents who did they uh work for them you mm. mentioned prasad and offering now people are living on their own and they they have their own shrine or they you know they want to be a bit more independent yes. even to uh, offer the prasad you know they must learn that you go and buy things from a restaurant i don't think there is a special kitchen reserved to make roti in a mm. busy restaurant mm. you know you you just take you, you the chance you buy what you what you get and what do we do at home we've got a special thari mm. special karai special belna everything is special washed and clean and put away before any other dishes yes come. there's no cross contamination no cross contamination is very important yeah. so all of those little things are important practices in our religion yes you know and i think young people should learn it's such a simple procedure take these i i i i've seen today myself you taught me how to make rot and i think this video for everyone who's watching they're going to see how it is i've done it you know uh, yeah, they can do it easy. and it's very simple ingredients very simple instructions i think when we look at it and we see our grandmothers and our aunts do it we get so intimidated yeah. uh, mostly and uh, now today i've learned to okay, you know what i can do this by myself yes yes you know some of us live in very small restricted yes, yes. places uh, everybody doesn't have the luxury of living in a big house having a separate kitchen yes but you know cleanliness in the way of having that kitchen um, totally vegetarian for about 40 days a month 40 yeah. days that's so important gives you that sense of satisfaction that there's no cross contamination yes. there's nothing that is not uh, vegetarian totally yeah. because remember the stove if you're using the same stove it's been used for 
non-veg non cooking veg, as yeah. well. And you know, it doesn't give you the satisfaction that you've done it yeah. properly. And you spoke about rooibos tea. Yeah. You know, I've been doing a lot of uh, demonstrations on healthy cooking without mm. oil. Okay. Do you know you can start off curry with tea, rooibos tea? What? Really? Yeah. yeah. Oh, wow. You know, you, if you don't, not everybody is fortunate enough to have non-stick pans. Yes. Uh, what you need to do is bring a little bit of rooibos tea to boil. Okay. It's got this uh, special aroma and yes. flavor. Yes. And you put your main ingredients in it and let it just simmer oh, wow. in that. And then you add all your flavoring, okay. all the, the herbs to it. And you know that rooibos tea creates that uh, gravy, that mm. stock that you need. Mm. And you don't need oil. Oh wow, no. that's, I mean, if we learn something yeah. new. Should we clean up and bring the raw to the front and then... Don't fill the glass in your house. Thank you so much for, first of all, being yourself. Oh, thank you so much. Uh, you were not in a hurry. <laughs> you gave me all your time. I know you are a professional person, mm. and uh, but you spent this time with us. But you know, you did it for God. Hundred yeah. percent. And also, we wish you everything of the best. You've done our community proud. Thank you so much. And tell your mother thank you very much for the loan of a beautiful, yeah. <laughs> well-appointed kitchen. I would like to give you oh. this little gift of mine. Thank it's a collection so of some of my work. Oh. And uh, I hope you're going to get lots of joy using it. This one here will be particularly nice. Okay. It's uh, totally vegetarian. Mm -hmm. uh, sweet meat, savory, and eggless bacon. Mm -hmm. And it's been an autumn favorite. Here there's a mixture of dishes. Uh, please enjoy the cooking. Thank you so much. This has been an unreal experience for me. I think uh, cooking with you today in the kitchen <laughs> has, and I know we all grew up, you know, listening to you on radio, seeing you on TV or in the newspapers, and it's just been so surreal being here in the well, kitchen with you today. Thank you. thank you for taking your time to teach us the other the well, newer generation. people like you who make people like us yeah. like people like you. <laughs> thank you so much. My pleasure. And thank you to the Mahasabha, South African Hindu Mahasabha, once again, for making this video possible and, you know, spreading this word and I'm sure lots of people are going to benefit out of this. Absolutely and I endorse all those sentiments. <laughs>